Howdy, howdy, folks. Once again, this is Donnie bringing you another doo -doo -doo Linux security report. And this time we have an article from ZDNet that it's not necessarily specifically Linux. This is about open source software. And open source software can be used on other operating systems besides just Linux. So you might have a lot of shops out there running Windows servers, for example, but running them with open source software. So this is more kind of like a generic type thing, which, you know, affects everybody, not just Linux users. But anyway, we see here that open source software breaches surge in the past 12 months. And it says that a simple lack of time is blamed for lack of security governments in open source projects. Okay, well, uh, first off here, a little bit of history. Back in the day when open source software first became a thing, one of the arguments in favor of it was that with proprietary closed source software, you only had just a very few people within an organization or within a company looking at the source code of that software. So it was easier to miss software bugs, which may be security problems. So these open source software advocates said, well, with open source software, everybody and his brother can download the source code and can look at that source code so you have millions and millions and millions of eyes on that source code. So it's going to be a lot easier then to catch the security bugs. Well, nice theory. Unfortunately, things haven't worked out quite that way. So several years ago, we had a very high profile security problem with OpenSSL, which is one of the core utilities, one of the core technologies, I should say, which runs the internet, which helps secure the internet. So we had a security problem with that. It was a security bug that came out and actually it was a series of security bugs which came out. And one of the problems was just the fact that we had a team of software developers on that OpenSSL project, which was severely understaffed and severely underfinanced. They just didn't have the staff or the financing in order to do justice to that project. So that's when the Linux Foundation then, you know, created a fund and a project which would help fund these different projects for the core uh, utilities, for the core technologies that help secure the internet. Right. So anyway, uh, this particular article here at ZDNet is not about that. This is about the companies who produce open source software in house because they don't want vendor lock in. Well, yeah, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here. We'll look at that here. And so let's uh, look here. We see here security breaches related to open source security projects are on the rise and a lack of time being made available to developers to resolve vulnerabilities is believed to be blamed. According to Sonotype's DevSecOps community survey, in which over 5,500 IT professionals were asked to give their opinion on today's open source projects and the community's security stance, open source breaches have increased by 71% over the last five years. Now, unfortunately, as we go through the article, we're going to see here that it doesn't really tell what kind of security breaches there were. We, we don't know what exactly is going on. We just know that the security breaches in open source software have increased by 71% over the last five years. So maybe a little bit more research later on. We can figure out what type of breaches they were. I don't know. But anyway, uh, well, we do know some of them. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, WordPress project for one thing. OK, uh, not exactly what we're talking about here, because uh, we're talking about in this article, you know, the in-house uh, development for the uh, uh, DevOps for enterprises. But yeah, still, the WordPress project is a good example. They always are having security breaches. Right. But anyway, 
Uh, on Monday, the open source governance services provider said the research revealed 41% of executives do not implement open source governance in their organizations, a problematic figure considering that open source components underpin vast sections of enterprise applications and networks. The open source community and its projects are integral to the enterprise, community-based technology which avoids vendor lock-in and makes use of open standards cannot be more cost-effective or, uh, excuse me, excuse me, uh, can not only be more cost-effective, but can also represent the work of some of the best coders available. And so, yeah, it makes sense a lot of organizations to develop open source software in-house. Well, because for one thing, it's not completely in-house. They can take the work of other developers from elsewhere because with a lot of the licensing models, for open source software, you have to make that code available for everybody, right? And so the uh, enterprises can take the open source code from other places that's already developed. They can look at it. If it suits their needs, fine. If it doesn't suit their needs, they can modify it, add to it, subtract from it. They can do whatever they want to with it in order to make it suit their needs. And then they can just provide that source code back to the community. And the alternative for that, or the alternative to that, I should say, is to be locked into specific vendors. So you got companies out there, they don't want to be locked into a contract with Oracle, for example, or with Microsoft. They want to be able to develop their own stuff and that can run on any platform and just not be locked into a particular vendor. So anyway, However, such constraints on time do allow some vulnerabilities to slip through the net. Research conducted by Sonotype suggests that over 10,000 companies downloaded the flawed component, which led to the Equifax breach, which led to the theft of information belonging to over 140 million customers. So yeah, bad problem there. Close to half of open source developers surveyed said they believe security must be a priority, but they just don't have enough time to spend. In addition, half the developers surveyed who are making use of cloud infrastructures say they rely on the cloud provider alone to maintain adequate security standards. Ooh, do you really want to do that? I don't think so. <laughs> the report does suggest, however, that progress is being made. Of those surveyed, 81% of companies with DevSecOps practices in place said cybersecurity response plans have been implemented. And those same groups are three times more likely to offer application security training to those involved in open source projects. In total, 62% of respondents with DevSecOps programs have open source governance plans in place in comparison to only 25% when no DevSecOps systems exist. So another interesting element of the report is the current level of automated process implementation. Mature DevOps setups are 350% more likely to utilize automation in security than immature setups. An area of improvement, however, is how cybersecurity is integrated into the DevOps pipeline. Then the majority of those without stable DevOps systems tend to implement security checks and tasks separately and with manual steps required, whereas mature DevOps programs are most likely to have fully integrated and automated security systems in place. Not recognizing the importance of security in a DevOps strategy is a recipe for disaster. No matter how fast the velocity of a DevOps organization, if what they produce is not supportive of confidentiality, integrity, and availability, oh yes, that famous CIA, the good CIA, not the other CIA that spies on everybody. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, if what they produce is not supportive of confidentiality, integrity, and availability, then they have failed, says Lou Cortez of Conva. Including security in everything that is done is part of enabling the business to meet its strategic goals. DevOps needs security. Okay, so what's the big lesson here? So the big lesson is if you're running an organization that 
is developing open source software for in-house use, you've got to have the strategy. You've got to have the strategy for being able to integrate security into your DevOps program. You've got to have training on secure practices, on secure coding practices. You've got to have training on testing. Yes, you've got to test it. And uh, you've got to give the developers the time in order to do the adequate testing and the, the secure coding. So basically, that's it, right? Anyway, uh, I will provide a link to this article in the video description below. When I do these videos, I do not mean to steal views from the original source. So at least click on the article, you know, just long enough to give them a little bit of their ad revenue, you know, so, uh, so nobody can excuse me of stealing from them, right? Anyway, with all that said, now a word from my sponsor. So if you are an IT administrator, and especially if you're a Linux administrator, you want to learn about Linux security and hardening. My book can help you do that. Lots of good hands-on recipes that you can apply to your own Linux systems to help harden them, to help keep out the bad guys, and also to help keep your insiders honest. So go ahead and check it out. I will provide the link for that in the video description below, and I will also provide the purchase link for the companion video course. So anyway, that's all I got for the day. I thank you for watching. If you like the video, be sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time.